Um, yeah. Malik, you did mention the haptic uh, feedback controller, which I do want to touch on because um, I know that there were questions in chat about that. Uh, so do you want to talk a little bit about your uh, questions you have with haptic? Yeah, so I mean, you guys have answered it a lot already because the biggest kind of discussion that I've heard of people is, is this a gimmick or is this a next gen feature? Yeah. And it kind of sounds like it's it's already kind of established itself as a next gen feature. The only thing that I've heard so far that might concern me is that if games aren't developing for it, if it just gets kind of forgotten down the road. Right. Yeah. But with studios like Naughty Dog and, and Sucker Punch, I, I don't see them really like forgetting about this feature because people forget about infamous second son on the ps4 when they started they really started using um the color changings on the back because you had the girl who can control neon they had the mm -hmm. volume coming out and you could hear the sound effects of the smoke and all the other you know the electricity through the microphone i i think that they're that sony has these studios underneath them that are yeah. going to take these features and run with them Caboose, yeah. you're gonna say something. I, I was just Sorry. gonna say, yeah, like I was, I was of the same boat when the PlayStation Five was coming out. I was like, eh, this controller stuff, it's just a gimmick. Like, come on, right. who have the feedback? Really? <laughs> like, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. But like I said, when I booted up Miles Morales and and I'm on the subway in the game, and I'm literally feeling what I would feel if I was standing on a subway and it was slowing down to a stop in the controller, I was like. Huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> whoa, I've never experienced this before. It's just, it's nothing like you've ever felt before or ever experienced. And I think for someone like myself who was not a believer and was sitting there like, uh, this is just going to be dumb, uh, it's one of these things, it's one of these features that you didn't really know you needed or even wanted for a controller until you've yeah. experienced it. Right. Now, well, for me, like, I, I don't know if I, if I, when I go to play my Series X, I'm not sitting there like, oh my God, this doesn't have dual sense, doesn't have haptic feedback. But I'm saying I wish it did, you know, yeah. like it's not it's not detrimental to, to for there to be the lack of the feature, but it's definitely an enhancement of the experience. See, I yeah. don't know if I'm there yet where I'm like playing my Xbox Series X and I'm like, man, I wish it was there just because although we get that experience in Astro's Playroom, we haven't seen more games that really utilize the controller. Um, but it does, like, when I started playing with the controller, it's just not, like, what you get in DualSense 4. Like, it's just not just the vibration yeah. that, like, kind yeah. of um, amps up or settles down. It it feels different. And this reminds me of, do you remember the Nintendo Switch? Well, when they launched it, that Marvel's game that came with 1-2 Switch, where you have to guess the amount of marble oh, yeah. in your Nintendo Switch oh, controller. Yeah. That... They called it, I think it was HD V HD Vibe. Rumble. HD Rumble. HD yes, Rumble. that's it. Mm. And it fe felt like you had marbles in yep. your hand and you could turn the controller and you could feel the marbles going to different parts of the controller. And they're not there. It's just that all fixed on that haptic feel exactly yeah. so it's like playstation might not have done it first because i do want right. to say the switch with one two switch did it but they forgot about it i hope we don't yeah. see that with the ps5 and i think when we go to those exclusives uh titles like god of war you mentioned the hammer right, right. like oh god if, if he, like that is brilliant i hope imagine they that yeah. and i feel imagine like you get thor's hammer It'd be God, crazy. Right. Oh and it'll God. just be like that exclusive, those exclusive titles because Dude. they're working so closely with Sony. I think it's those studios and those games that we should look at utilizing the yeah. half feedback. Um, yeah. I do want to yeah. mention something. I know, Steve, you want to cut in, but I just want to mention as well, the mic, there's a mic built into the controller right. now. Um, and for me, like <laughs> I play lots of Call of Duty. I mentioned this many mm -hmm. times. You never use the mic on the controller. Um, and I think Caboose, you said you usually turn the mic, um, and speaker off. Yeah. Right. That's correct. So yeah. for me, I don't know why I can, my, there we go. I'm back in focus. Um, but for me, I just wanted to test it on a multiplayer game. See how well my teammates could actually hear me while I'm playing with my controller all the way down. Cause I hold it near my lap when I'm playing and it's quite like the mic is actually really clear. I was surprised. I played a whole Warzone match with just that mic, um, and my my teammates were able to hear me. My boyfriend was cooking in the same room 
they didn't hear any of that. Oh, wow. so it's very wow. focused. The game I was playing with the my TV, so there was no headset. They yeah. the gameplay, I thought they would hear that. They didn't hear any of that. So I was really amazed on that okay. alone. Of course, it didn't help me in Call of Duty because I couldn't hear the footsteps since I was using my TV audio. Oh. I could hear the footsteps of my enemies. <laughs> but I, I was also amazed at how precise the mic was. Mm. Uh, to, to cool. your original point, I don't uh, I, playing with it. It's not a gimmick. Uh, it, like straight up, um, I I was on the boat where I was like, okay, haptic feedback. It, these are buzzwords that Sony's just throwing yes. around. But as yeah. soon as you load into Astro's Playroom, as soon as you load into Call of Duty Spider Man, like these are games that you know <laughs> exemplify what this controller can do. And I, I going back to what I was saying earlier, this is the next gen feature first and foremost. But I really hope that third party studios look at this technology and they're like, what can we do? How can we get creative with this? Mm -hmm. uh, because as we saw with the Dual Shock 4, there was the light bar, there was the touchpad. No one used these things. Like they, they were just forgotten about. And yeah. did you put your hand up? Did you use them? Yeah, absolutely. First, first light and Outlast. Outlast is terrifying. And this is, yeah. I'm going to let you finish before I. I Go this, do this point. Go ahead. <laughs> but but to to your point, like Infamous came out at the start of the generation, and it wasn't until what Ghost of Tsushima really started using it mm -hmm. with the speaker, uh, adding more immersion to it with the touchpad, yeah. as as well as that. There's a whole generation there where people were like, I, I'm not using this touchpad for more than just <laughs> another button on the controller. Go, Ghost of Tsushima was the first time. I mean, there's probably other games, but Ghost of Tsushima is the one I most notably remember where I'm actively using the touchpad yeah. consistently. Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it was just like a menu button, for instance. And right. I really right. that's not the case with this controller because I think that there's yeah. something really special with the dual sense. Uh, mm -hmm. And I really hope that Sony issues uh, like a not a command, but really wants their first party studios to get really creative. I want them to get really wild, with the exception of one thing. And Astro's Playroom does this. I don't really like blowing into my controller. That's weird as hell. <laughs> like, especially in 2020. That 20, was the random. Yeah, when they're like, hey, you so get used to that playing on the DS. <laughs> like, no, like I don't want to do that. That's a, that to me was the only gimmicky part where I was like, I could go without this. But otherwise, everything about that uh, controller is is next gen for me. Yeah, nice. Well, and the thing is, is I'm really what this may sound you know a little bit odd, but I'm excited for horror games and like Resident Evil with the haptic feedback. Because the things, because if you look at games like Outlast, they did it with the bar on the front. When you had yeah. your camera out, it would turn green like you were recording. And then you also got to think about they did the breathing through the the stereo on the, yeah, or the, the micro or the yeah. speaker on the controller. So like things like that, I think they can really do a great job at immersing you. And games like Senua, Hellblade Sacrifice, mm -hmm. where it's all about psychosis and kind of tricking your mind, games like that I think are really going to thrive. And also another point that I wanted to put out is that Sean Murray from Hello Games, uh, they developed No Man's Sky. He did an interview and he looked like a child speaking about the next generation and what they were going to do with No Man's Sky. And for for people who treat their games like their baby and they're and it's an art project and it is, you know, almost a magnum opus for them, they are going to utilize these features to only enhance the experience that people get from the games. I think it's also up to the developers whether or not they make it a gimmick like blowing into your controller or yeah. if they add something that makes you feel like you're already there yeah that's my and biggest concern is how how they implement it exactly yeah. and I feel like we're gonna have to wait and see i really do hope that this isn't a feature like all of you mentioned that is just forgotten because there's so many uh, possibilities that you could have with this uh mm -hmm. before we go stealth gamer at the top of the show did have a question about the adaptive triggers um how do you guys feel about the adaptive triggers and where would you want to see that implemented in a game next uh, I would like Spider-Man to adapt it a little, like, more fully into gameplay. I would right. love if, like, at the start of your swing, you're real, there's a lot of tension leading into, like, a full press as you go into the whole swing. Um, rather than, like, what we got in Miles Morales is just that at the very end of the button press is where you get a little bit of tension, which still feels cool. But, like, I was watching somebody play Call of Duty, uh, and they were showing off different guns with the adaptive triggers. And there yep. was one video, like there was one gun where he like had to force the press. And granted, like if I'm playing competitively, I probably turn those off. 
Yeah. Um, but if I'm playing like maybe zombies or the campaign, stuff like that, it can be a lot of fun to have adaptive triggers that give you that resistance that that feels like when you when you're holding like an LMG, you're just yeah. you're going yeah. full Rambo with it, you know, something like that. Um, so I think honestly, just in my head, the one place I would love to see the most out of the adaptive triggers is Spider-Man. But even like, you know, we're talking about the Leviathan Axe and God of War. Imagine if you have to really force the left trigger down to call it back. You mm -hmm. feel like the weight of it. You feel the resistance. There's there's so much fun tech they can do with this controller uh, for games to come. And I agree. I hope it's not just Sony's first party studios. I hope that we get a lot of cross platform games where the developers really want to put some implementation into the dual sense uh, because it's just so much fun. It's really, really fun. Sometimes I'm not even joking. PlayStation's off. I'll be sitting here and I do this. I, I like tap the <laughs> controller against my palm because it feels it feels fun. Like you feel like a weird thing out of it. And I, it's, I don't know. No, I don't get that weird thing. It's just weird to do this. People are weird. That do this. <laughs> I don't know. It's cool. <laughs> cool. When you're not it's playing. Just, it's this just is so you. different. You're weird. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so different. Like I, I, I love it. I love it. That's yeah. But that's cool though. I mean, I and for me personally, Gran Turismo and the next Battlefield are, are where mm -hmm. I want to see it because mm -hmm. Battlefield really is kind of like that. That like top tier war experience, you know, where you like really get it. It's more immersive than Call of Duty, I would say. And so that I think the adapter trigger is something that would work better in Battlefield versus Call of Duty, since Call of Duty is a little bit more twitchier uh, with the shooting. Right. But then like Gran Turismo and racing. I feel like you've like, been like, knocking Call of speed. Duty this whole like first Call with, like, people play Call of Duty on PlayStation 4. <laughs> Malik! <laughs> Look, as much as as much as Caboose hates Death Stranding, I hate Call of Duty twice as much. Wow. That, that wow. is just okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Modern Warfare is actually like the best Call of Duty in years. And I, yes. I, trust me, Malik, I'm the same way. I used to be a Call of Duty fanatic. No joke. I started my YouTube channel to be a Call of Duty YouTuber. Oh, um, wait, and, what? Yes. Uh, wow. and, and so, I didn't know that. And so and so I got back. I, like I, I was very into that franchise. And then, oh, my God, just there was there's a, a string of games and a string of years where it was just – I don't know what they were thinking. I just, I can't wrap my head around it to this day. But like Modern Warfare is the best Call of Duty in years. I don't really like Black Ops Cold War that much. I still think no. Modern Warfare is way better. Um, but Zombies is a lot of fun. It I'm is. Zombies it. is right. fun. And you brought up a really great point, like the adaptive triggers in Call of Duty. Like they adjust based on what you're using, the loadout. Although I, yeah. I think it's a huge distract detraction uh, in competitive play. I, I don't like that whatsoever. Um you don't want that resistance in there, but for a, for an immersion standpoint, going through the campaign and using those triggers, like yes. that's really cool, really cool. Mm -hmm. And I I hope to see more games kind of implement that and, and play around with it. I think shooters and could be a lot of fun with those triggers. Right. Yeah, and I think you're right. Where we'll see that is definitely in uh, campaign story based experiences. I think that's where adaptive and haptic feedback will thrive uh, because yeah. it's building on that immersion. But I guess, you know, like I say every week, we really just don't know. And we will have right. to wait and see. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Uh, Aaron, what do you have coming up uh, this week? Uh, yeah, so still doing a lot of Spider-Man Miles Morales coverage. Been posting a ton of 4K gameplay up, up, up on the channel, like Free Roman with some of the different suits. I got my Let's Play going still. Uh, and then MK Ultimate comes out tomorrow. So that's really exciting. Three new DLC characters from Mortal Kombat 11 to try out, and it's coming to next gen. So I'm really excited to see some of the upgrades that are happening there. Uh, and yeah, you can check me out, youtube.com slash caboose, twitch.tv slash caboose, Twitter, Instagram, at caboose EK. Everywhere. Now, Check Malik, out my photos. I, I post awesome photos. Yo, I, on Morales. the break, I liked what, like your photos that you just posted on Miles Morales. So check it out if you want to know what we're talking about. They're beautiful. <laughs> They're beautiful. I'm going to have to put my photos up there. Rival yours. We'll have a poll. We'll have a poll. Who has the best photo? Uh, Malik, fine. I know you have some... Did you say it's yours? What? Yeah. Okay, Ooh. I'm not gonna fight. I'm not gonna fight <laughs> now that we're ending it, but I'm bringing the fight next week. Um, all right, Molly, I know you got you have some articles on the website. What can we expect? Yeah, I got some Genshin Impact guides coming up, uh, and then I am still working on my Ghost of Tsushima raid guide. Um, it's just such a such a big event and kind of it's massive. Mm. It, there's a lot to write about it, so I'm gonna break it up into parts: chapter one, two, and three. Chapter two is the hardest, but I want to make sure I get through the raid at least three times before I write my guide, just so I have you know all the little nice. pieces down. 
Oh, that's awesome. Um, and you could check the, those guides and those articles on squadstate.com. Now, yep. Steve, uh, do you have a pack week? I, I know we kind of have this break because next gen consoles have been out, but there's still a lot of content coming up. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think it's now it's just a game of catch up right now. Uh, Call of Duty obviously came out, so I've got a couple features coming down the pipeline. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned to Squad State's um, website to find more of that. But yeah, it's exciting. I mean, like, I just feel like there's so much out there right now. I'm kind of in this anxious period of like what to do, what to cover, but we'll get through it. We will get through it, and I will actually get through showing you guys um, at home more of the PlayStation on our TV show, Squad, that's on Jinx uh, Esports TV Canada, and on Apple TV, as well as Amazon Prime. There's a lot of places, so be sure to check that out for all the exclusives on Next Gen, as well as some Call of Duty stuff as well. So uh, stay tuned for all of that, and we will be back next Monday. If you have any suggestions for topics, let us know on our Twitter. Twitter at Squad State, or hit us up individually and let us know who has the best Miles Morales pictures because it'll be me. Thank you guys so much for watching, you boys for joining me, and we'll see you next week.